gentleman from California. The gentleman from California is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And let me begin by thanking my friend and colleague. Chairman of the Financial Services Committee, uh, Congressman Frank, for your uh, tremendous leadership. Not only uh, did you uh, help us move this bill forward, but you helped, quite frankly, to make it a much better bill. So I want to thank you, Congressman Frank, also your staff, Daniel McGlinchey, Jim Siegel, and Katie Lavelle, for working with us over the last few months to craft this bill. Also, uh, let me just thank and recognize Congressman Luis Gutierrez, who chairs the subcommittee, um, for his uh, support and assistance. In addition, I must thank the uh, Sudan Divestment Task Force and its staff, and especially uh, my staff, uh, Lauren Jenkins and uh, Crystal Santos, as well as uh, Sam Bell and Aisha House Moshi, formerly of myself, who really helped helped me and helped the groups around the country come together to put this bill together. And uh, let me thank our ranking member of the subcommittee of the committee for his early leadership, uh, Congressman Backus, as well as Congressman Garrett, a co-sponsor of this bill, and also to uh, Congressman Don Payne, Frank Wolf, and Senator Brownback for testifying at the committee when this bill was heard. And lastly, let me just commend and thank our great speaker, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, uh, for her tremendous leadership, and also our majority leader, uh, Steny Hoyer, for making sure that our caucus works in a bipartisan fashion to keep this issue alive. Thirteen years ago, the world stood by as nearly one million people, one million people were slaughtered in the genocide in Rwanda. And the best our country could do then was to apologize for failing to act after the fact. Many of us swore that another Rwanda would never again take place on our watch, but it is happening again. Three weeks ago last week on July 22, 2004, under, excuse me, three years ago, under uh, the leadership of our good friend Congressman Don Payne, Congress finally formally declared that genocide was taking place in Darfur. Today, the genocide is getting worse. I have witnessed this horror on three occasions in Darfur, and let me tell you, it is getting worse. Mr. Speaker, many of us in a bipartisan effort have spoken out repeatedly on the floor over the last three years in condemnation of the ongoing genocide in Darfur. These efforts have only intensified as we have sought to use each and every tool at our disposal to bring this genocide to an end. In April, we passed a resolution urging our friends in the League of Arab Nations to exert their influence on the government of Sudan. In May, we called on the Defense Department to examine the rehabilitation of the Abeche airfield in Chad to support and expand humanitarian operations in Darfur. And in June, we passed another resolution urging the Chinese to leverage their very unique influence with Sudan to help end the genocide. And today, we take another very important step forward by passing H.R. 180. This is bipartisan legislation which would support the grassroots movement to divest from companies doing business in Sudan. Organizations led by young people like STAND and the Save Darfur Coalition have been in the forefront of successful student divestment campaigns across the country to pressure the Khartoum regime to end the genocide in Darfur, and we do owe them a debt of gratitude. To date, over 54 universities, 19 states, and nine cities have passed divestment legislation to pull state and local funds out of companies that conduct business with Sudan. Throughout our country, our constituents are standing up and demanding that their hard is killing its own people. My bill would authorize and support states, local governments, universities, mutual funds, and pension plans that choose to divest from companies doing business in Sudan. At the same time, we would prohibit the federal government from renewing or signing contracts with multinational companies doing business with Sudan. These businesses and industries are in the mineral and oil and military equipment industries. We want them to stop propping up this genocidal regime. 
As we pursue divestment, we must also continue to support the rapid and unconditional deployment of the United Nations and African Union forces, along with free and unfettered, unfettered access to, for groups providing humanitarian assistance. And we must continue to urge all parties to lay down their arms and come to the table to negotiate a political solution. Every day we wait. Killings, the rapes, the starvation, the dislocation, they all continue. This genocide is happening on our watch. Divestment work with the racist apartheid. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. This genocide, as I said, is happening on our watch. But this time, working together in a bipartisan coalition, we have the will and determination and the the, the real uh, wherewithal to stop it. It worked with the racist apartheid regime in South Africa, as our chairman mentioned earlier, and it can work with the genocidal regime in Sudan. Not on our watch. Save Darfur, Darfur as the Save Darfur Coalition so passionately has said. And today, I hope that the House of Representatives will say the same thing by passing H.R. 180. Again, I want to thank the Financial Services Committee, and I must thank again Congressman Frank for really making sure that what we intend to do, we will do. And thank you again for making this a much stronger bill, Congressman Frank. We've worked on this for a couple of years, and I tell you, working together in a bipartisan fashion, uh, we will end this horrific genocide in Darfur. Time has expired. Gentleman from New Jersey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I now yield.